Okay, Kevin has arrived. The second day of the second week. Welcome home from your day at school, honey. Well, thank you, darling wife, waiting for me at the door with her camera. <laughs> Here's my flashlight I brought today. Is that ever bright? <laughs> yeah. And not working? No, it died about the time I started using it. I see, I see. Okay. Well, I, uh, I'm happy to see that you're home and I'm wondering if, uh, we could sit down and you could tell us all about day two of week two. Yes, I will do that. <laughs> I would like to get a nice cold drink first. It's hot out here in the desert sun. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, you want to get your stuff out of the car. I'll go get you a nice cold drink and I'll meet you over there in the chairs. Will do. All right. Hey, see what I wore today? The Richard McPherson scarf. It kept me really warm because when I go to school, it's 5.30 in the morning and only about 45 degrees. And that was okay last week because I'd go and sit in a classroom nice and warm all day, but now I sit in a parking lot all day, shivering until the sun comes up two hours later. And then you have to peel all the layers off. Yeah, and then the <laughs> scarf goes in the car, the sweater comes off around noon. Yeah, but then you got to keep your hat on because the sun's beating on you. Yeah, and then it gets yeah. warm and you come home and want a nice cold drink. So that's why you have the flashlight. Because we're checking. We're doing our inspection on the trucks and it's still dark out. <laughs> so I need new batteries, maybe a better light than this. Okay, well let's see what we have in the RV. Yeah. Alright, Kevin has brought all his stuff, which he sprays down before we bring it in the house because of COVID. And here is, oh look at the poor man. Look what I have for you. I'm elixir, dying. elixir. I'm dying of thirst in the desert. Oi, oi, oi. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, honey, that's great. All right, so can you please tell us about what you did at school today? At school today, I got there in the dark, in the cold, and we have roll call at 5.30. So I got there at 25 after, and I got, I took my time, and I got in there at 5.30, and the guy had already started. I think the clocks at that place are at least five minutes fast because we used to go for lunch early all the time and he calls the roll early all the time so anyway after the roll call i went out to the range where all the trucks are and you have to stay there and stay out of the way until they get all the tractors pulled up and hook up the trailers and move the trailers to where they're going to be used that day so in the wee dark hours when all that's going on you have your papers with your vehicle inspection, which we received yesterday, Monday morning, and we have to learn it all. There's like 135 points, and each point has a little sentence after it, and you have to know it verbatim, because it's written by the school, and you'll be tested by the examiners of the school, so it's exactly what you need to know, and speak to the examiner to pass your exam. So you basically are memorizing it, and it's the vehicle inspection, so you're, you're pointing at something on the truck and saying what it is and how you would inspect it and what you're looking for. And so we kind of do that, and the smart people will like pair up with someone else, so one guy is trying to, trying to do it and the other person's looking at the sheets and correcting them and so on. And most of the time I'm sitting there with my eyes closed, repeating it, from memory and then I check my sheet to make sure I, I had all the words right. Are you saying you're not one of the smart people that, that buddied up with somebody else? Is that what I just heard you say? Yeah, I'm not doing that yet until I'm, I'm pretty sure I got it right because I, I've watched some of the guys try to do it that way and you spend more time getting corrected. It's better to learn it first and 
then ah, the guy okay. with you is just saying, well, you should have said this one word or, you know, you missed one thing. Okay, I just thought that was an interesting it's way only, It's only the that. second day of, of doing this, so, yeah. and, and we have two weeks to get it right, so I'm, I'm, I think I'm making good progress. Do you have a method for memorizing so much information? I must visualize. First you do it looking at your papers and looking at the truck and doing it and somebody actually you know walked us through some of it yesterday so we had a demonstration so now I just close my eyes and visualize it picture the part and picture what what you should be looking for and something like that you know like if it's the water pump are the hoses connected are the hoses leaky are the hoses frayed is the water pump leaking is the water pump driven by a belt check the belt here's what you look for in the belt so all those things you go through in your head so we spend time doing that and there is a truck sitting there available that we can go over and practice on and look at but if there's six guys or ten guys doing it then it's kind of hard to get your hands and your head in there and it's dark you need a flashlight <laughs> and and you're, and I, I brought a flashlight has... today and it was dead so I was using <laughs> my phone some of the time a lot of people were using their phones uh, I'm gonna look for a different flashlight for tomorrow and uh, what you're waiting for is when they got all the trucks positioned and the cones set up and all that, then they say, okay, we're going to practice this maneuver. And one person at a time goes in the truck and they practice the maneuver. And if they do poorly, they take a long time practicing the maneuver until they get it. And then the next person goes. So yesterday, I got to get in the truck, drive the truck straight forward and then back the truck up straight to where I started. And I got to do it again, just to prove to the instructor that it wasn't a fluke. And then I got out of the truck. So yesterday in eight hours, I drove the truck for three minutes. Oh, that was it for the whole day? It was it for the day, and I waited my turn to do that. So it wasn't until like, you know, the seventh hour or something like that, I finally got to do it. So then today, there were some people who hadn't finished or hadn't done it quite right and so they set it up again and but they reversed the instructor reversed the he did it alphabetical the first day so then he reversed the alphabetical order so you got you didn't have to wait like all day if and so you mean by last name by last name so uh, well that doesn't work so i mean for me, M is always kind of in the middle, yeah. so it doesn't matter which direction. Right. So and instead S, of, are you more towards Instead the... of being 12th yesterday, I was like 5th today. Ah, okay. so... so it depends on your last name. Yeah. And you're supposed to sit there and watch other people do it to see what you can learn. But after somebody tries like five times and still doesn't get it, you're like, I'm not learning that. I mean, so I go back to your inspection and your list and keep practicing that. And then after a while, the instructor was like, this is taking a long time so there's a limit now you can't after five minutes get out of the truck and let someone else try so then it, it got a little quicker after that gives more people a chance so I got to do it again I, I jumped in the truck and it was a different truck yesterday I did it in a Freightliner today I did it in a Volvo so there was a couple of cool things to check and see that were different the clutch was much different um, so I got in the truck now yesterday I did the maneuver with the instructor sitting next to me and so he was he was giving me tips and pointers and so on today I got in the truck by myself I took the truck all the way up and then I took the truck all the way back in one pass I didn't have to re reset or reposition or anything like that and I got all the way back again and I blasted the air horn really loud because <laughs> I thought I, I did it pretty good you know, you know. Set the parking brake and get out, and the next guy gets in. So now I just want to um, mention that you had air horns on your motorcycle in St. Croix. Yeah. So were these as powerful as the ones on your motorcycle? Much more powerful. More powerful. Wow. Yeah. Did people hold their ears or anything? Or no. Okay. Do people have on hearing protection? No, they don't. I think no. I woke a couple of people up. Okay. So then after... Maybe better than coffee. After a few more people got to do it, then we, we went for lunch. And then after lunch, we set up a little differently. Hold on now. 
just want to clarify, your class starts at? 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, and so it finishes at? It finishes at 2 in right, the afternoon. Right, so your lunch is at? Lunch is at 9.30 <laughs> in the morning. So sometimes Kevin beats me to lunch. I'm, I'm but, having like, my lunch yeah. and she hasn't even had her I, breakfast. I yet. haven't even had breakfast and he's yeah. already calling me having his lunch, which yeah. we think is pretty funny. But anyway. They do have afternoon sessions as well, so for people like me who are not early birds, you can actually start in the afternoon, but then you go till 11 o'clock at night. I'm wondering if the afternoon class has less people and I might have, might get more driving time. Is that mm. like this morning before lunch? I had one minute of driving time. Wow. Because I did it right. And then after lunch, we set up for a different maneuver. But couldn't you have gone just forward, backward for your five minutes? No, no. You, you, get, just do you, it. Get, you get five minutes to get it right. Ah. If you do okay. it right immediately, immediately, it means you know it, get out of the truck, somebody oh. else needs to practice. So that's something I'm disappointed in. I'm not, I don't think we're gonna get a lot of real time to practice these skills. And so I don't know how prepared we'll be for the, for the exam. Mm. So in the afternoon, the maneuver was uh, offset parking. So the truck is positioned. You're supposed to take the truck back and move it over and back it into a lane next to where you started. So what you do is crank the wheel to the right so that the truck moves like so and the trailer moves like so and then crank the wheel to the left to line up the truck with the trailer back up a little ways and then crank the crank the truck the other way to get the trailer straight again and then line up your truck and then back in the rest of the way. Without hitting any of those orange cones. Right, so first the instructor did a demonstration and he, he talked us through it, made sure we knew the moves, and he stopped at each point and said, okay, here's where you look at this and here's where you turn your wheel this way. And then he'd make another move and say, here's what you're looking for and here's what you do now. So each step, he showed it, demonstrated it. Because you're all in the actual truck at this point. No, no, we're all standing there. And oh. he will make a move, get out of the truck, and say, look at this, look at the... Oh, wow. And then he'll say, one at a time, get in the truck, close the doors, and look in the mirrors and see what you're looking for. And how, because that's, you're backing up, you're using your mirrors. You gotta know what, what you're seeing and what to look for and how to react to it. Yeah, no cranking your neck and looking through the back window. Yep. And so... <laughs> and do you next... want to share, can you share what you figured out yesterday? Though we'll probably make a video specific for yesterday, but you, I mean, you figured out a really good trick. Yesterday, while backing straight up, you're looking at, in your mirrors, both sides of the truck. And you see the side of the truck, it's just a big slab. And you can tell when it's when it's going out of alignment, but by the time you, you see that, the truck is not, and it's starting and to block party. And when you say party. truck, you mean the trailer? Yeah, when you see the trailer going out of line, and it starts to block some of your mirror, and you're like, wow, I better do something. By then, you're, you're gonna overcorrect, or you're, you're too late. It's better to make really tiny movements as soon as something starts to go out. So what I learned was, I figured out, I'm looking down the sides of the truck, I'm looking at the tires, at the very back of the trailer and I can just see the edge of each tire like a, a skinny black line at the very back farthest point. If one of those skinny lines disappears I know I've started going the wrong way and I've got to give the wheel just a little nudge bring it back so I see both black lines and straighten it back out and keep going. So that was that was an interesting trick because I noticed the guys that did it really well you watch that steering wheel it, it almost didn't move. You'd, you'd think they had it locked in a vise, but they're just making the tiniest little move. And so you've got to see when it starts going wrong. Don't wait until it's wrong and then start doing this, trying to trying right. to haul it back in. Right. That's where people are, are really messing up. And that's what I used to do on the boat off, and I'd overcorrect. You know, it was, you just have to do a slight little adjustment, yeah. not panic. Yeah, and, otherwise you know, you're wigwagging. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, part of this maneuver today, the offset parking, involves doing a straight line back at the very end of it. Right? Once you've made your turn and made your other turn lined up, now it's straight backing to get the truck back into the pylons to the point where you're supposed to stop. So, the head instructor gave us a demo, told us all the things to look for. Next, they pulled the truck back up to where you started and you get in the truck and another instructor is sitting beside you. 
So you're kind of reciting what you were told to do, and he's watching, and he'll and he'll say, "All right, look for this, look for this," and you're looking, and he'll say, "Now make the turn." Now he's so he's telling you when to do it, and I'm trying to figure out how I can how I can figure out how to how to know when to do it. So that time, <clears throat> with him him standing behind you in the sleeper telling you these things, it helps. All right. The next step tomorrow you do it by yourself and even even with the guy in the cab telling you what to do a lot of people couldn't get it a lot of people would would make the first turn the second turn was crazy or they'd make both the turns but when they got into the pylons they, they were drifting and they couldn't correct it so I got to where I had come into the pylons the trailer was about halfway in and I knew, looking at, looking in my mirrors, I knew I was gonna keep drifting to one side and squash a pylon. He said, pull, pull straight ahead and center yourself again and then pull straight back. You don't have to go all the way to the beginning and redo the offset because if you've gotten into the cones, then on the exam, it's all right to do a, a pull up and straight and go straight back from there. So I made it with one pull up and then pulled it all the way Which back. is what you practiced yesterday. The that straight last, back. That the straight, straight back. back, yeah. So now you so combined. So now I know the little trick. Yeah, yeah, and you combined mirrors. two things today then. Right. And got in there. Well, you're my hero. Yeah. I'm backing up hero. And uh, afterwards, uh, the head instructor came over and he's looking at me, shaking his head and going, hey, that was my first time. I've never done it before. He said, well, I, I think you're lying, but that was good. Very See, good. That's <laughs> yeah. what he said to yeah. you? <laughs> There are a couple of a couple of people that that get it because they they can visualize the truck and they know if you want to go if you're backing up and you want to go left turn right and get the trailer started going the way you want and then turn the other way to line up your tractor again and then you're headed in the new direction and other people don't get that concept at all and so so it takes a while for them to get you know, comfortable with that concept and understanding it. You, you got it. It's a geometric problem, and you have to right. you have to get it straight in your head before right. you do anything else. And I, you know, if you if you ever drove like a pickup truck with a small trailer behind it, you like already, you did for 11 years, you already know the basics. You already know this way, then that way. Mm -hmm. you, you judge your distances and your turn radius and all that stuff. But it seems counterintuitive to a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of people in that situation won't even use their mirrors. They'll put their arm up right. and look out the back window and do it like that. And I made it a point never to do that. I, yep. knew, I knew it was better to use your mirrors. Yeah. And now that's and how you do it in a truck like this. Look at that. It's like you had a premonition that years down the road you'd yeah. work on getting your CDL and yeah. now you can apply that so to the big trucks. That's everybody good. got a turn at the offset parking, um, reverse parking. So in the last half hour, we set up for straight back and forth again, and a couple of people got to get back in the truck and do. One guy hadn't done it yesterday because he was still in the classroom, so he got to try it for the first time, and then a, and then a girl got to do it because she still hadn't done it correctly by herself. So tomorrow, I think there'll still be a couple of people doing straight backs, and the rest of us will, will start doing the offsets. And if we can do the offset, solo without the instructor very well then by by friday or monday we'll be on the other side of the range where we start learning big stuff what bigger than this parallel parking whoa like that, no way which involves basically <laughs> another offset reverse but to the right parallel parking and you have uh cones in front and behind that you have to fit in between and get perfectly straight and parallel. Oh, so I didn't think you would parallel park a big thing like that. In some places you have to. Wow. Like the offset reverse parking uh, mm -hmm. that we did today would be, let's say you pulled up at a, at a customer and you had to go alongside the building to get to the back and then your loading bay was right there. So right. you just do an offset to get back to that to that dock, right? right. Sometimes you've got you've got like a truck there and, and you're in a parking lot and you gotta get up and just pull in in front of them or something like that. All right. Those those things happen. But it's good it's a good practice so you learn how to back up and maneuver the truck while you're back in the trailer is, is the thing. because it does strange things. 
if it was just a tractor, it'd be nothing. It'd be like driving a car. Right. So it's basically, it's a serpentine maneuver, uh, the Ooh, offset. Serpentine. Because what you're doing is you're starting here and kind of twisting the truck and, and aiming it this way. And then you have to twist the truck and get it this way. So you're making like a right turn and a left turn in reverse. I like how you wave your hands, by the way, for Thank visuals. You. Thank so you. Really, is that from your Tai Chi practice? No. How do you do that so very... from Japanese butterfly class. <laughs> Oh, pretty! Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we invented the hand dance, didn't we? <laughs> so that was cool today. So that's that's, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, you're making making fast headway, and yeah. you have the opportunity to practice and lots of time to study for not, your hundred point inspection. Not enough time to practice. Like oh. I said, it was it was a minute this morning, and it was about two minutes this okay. afternoon. But That's all time the wheel time I've had today is three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah, mm. I would have liked you know a few hours. Right. There's too many people. There's too many. How big is your class? Like, well, there's five of us and now a sixth guy that graduated from the class Monday and there were two guys that graduated from the class Friday to the range so that's seven of them. Yeah so six, when he's saying graduated from eight. class you mean the one week of in in uh, the classroom in the classroom doing the doing the book work and studying for your written exam. Yeah. Uh, so two guys got there Friday five of us got there Monday and another guy today but there are people who were already there from last week. Right, because you're gonna are, spend three weeks in, or, yeah, in the yard. Yeah, there are yard. people who are, who are with us that were, that were there last week. So, you know, we're, we're on a list of, I don't know, 15 people waiting to get, get into that truck. But even three times 15 doesn't make, uh, how many hours are you there? Six. We're there 40 hours a week. Oh, yeah. Eight hours a day. So eight hours. And if everybody gets five minutes and you only have how many people? There were That's interruptions. What's happening, there what's were, happening the rest of the time? There were the interruptions truck. where if somebody was getting their official exam, we clear the range. So we all have to go over to the oh. building and, and hide. They don't want us standing there watching, making the guy nervous or you know getting in the way if the, instructor, the examiner is telling him to do certain things. So we cleared the range once yesterday and uh, twice today okay. for somebody actually getting an exam. And how long does the exam last generally? It depends what it is. The one this afternoon, the guy just did a straight straight back. So he pulled the truck forward, he pulled the truck back, it took us five minutes to get all the cones set up for him, and then it was over, and then we had to rearrange the cones for what we were doing. I'm so. sorry, I thought you said his exam. This is just one little part of the exam. One part of his exam. So you don't do the exam all in one swoop? I don't know the story with this guy. Maybe he did his exam and he failed that one part, so he got to go back and do it again. Could be. Well, we will find out more about that as you get closer to your exam day. But yeah, we'll see how, how many times I screw it up. Right? Today and yesterday sounds like you did really well. And you have that well-deserved lemon water. Thank you for sharing with us what you did today at uh, Phoenix Driving, truck Inst driving, truck driving Institute. Institute. Thank you so much. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona and appreciate you all checking in with us to see how Kevin is progressing uh, as, a, as a CDL to be driver. <laughs> all right, so thanks a lot. Kevin, if you could do my wave, this is it from Tanya with love. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, and uh, comment and subscribe. Yeah. Okay, bye.